My favorite kind of science is the type of science that is not immediately recognizable as how it works. That's kind of where the idea of magic and mystery comes from, and it's so cool to be able to understand why things work. So, this is a balloon. This is a balloon, but they are not the same. This is a Japanese paper balloon, traditionally called the kamifusen. And this is just an ordinary rubber balloon. So I'm going to show you the differences between the two and show you why this is so amazing. Okay, so ordinary rubber balloon. It is a piece of rubber and you can kind of wrap your head around why it works. You push air into this balloon because it's an elastic substance. <laughs> and the air is held in place because there's pressure all around it by the rubber that wants to return to its original shape. If I were to let go of this end, suddenly it expels all of the air because the elastic of the balloon wants to return to its original shape. That's how a balloon works. It makes sense. But what about this one? This one's a Japanese paper balloon. Now, a Japanese paper balloon is made out of paper that is pretty much completely air impermeable, which means that air just can't get through it. So once the air is in there, it's going to stay in there, except for this tiny little hole. This balloon always has a hole in it, so there's always a chance for the air to get out or to get in. Now, I can show you that just by squishing it. I can crumple it up and it is now deflated. If I let it go and place it on the table there, it's not going to inflate by itself, but I do not need to use the air pressure in my lungs to inflate this balloon like I would a rubber balloon. Instead, I'm going to hit it. Yes, this is going to inflate by me striking it. So I'm going to just do it now and I'm going to show you. And just by hitting it, it has inflated itself. How does this work? Because technically that should not make sense. By striking something, I am increasing the pressure in it. So when I squish it, I should be forcing the air out. And when I force the air out, it should deflate. But right now there is an equal amount of pressure on the inside as the outside. So the same pressure exists on both sides because there's a hole in it. Otherwise there would be a difference in pressure and it would either inflate or deflate. Why is it that when I strike it, it causes there to be a low pressure zone on the inside of this balloon instead of a high pressure zone? Well, science is amazing. And no, it's not actually magical. It is just about physics and science. So the Kamifusen became popular in the early 1890s, but we're not exactly sure where it came from. It was widely available throughout Eastern Asia as inexpensive toys for children. Nowadays, it's not quite as popular, but it's very interesting as a science toy. In the past, it has been attributed to visoelasticity. Now, that's the property that causes a crumpled sheet of paper to slowly unfold. Uh, essentially, the paper wants to return to its spread out state. But that cannot explain the entirety of this balloon's amazing properties. Now, it has been suggested that the bouncing or the increase, the repeated striking of the balloon causes pressure changes inside the balloon that alternately push out and pull in air. And that is actually true and how it works, but it's not obvious how the pressure changes and why more air comes in than goes out, which is required for the balloon to inflate. Now, I do want to make a point here of uh, noting that it doesn't have to be round. Now, they've actually made these in the shape of a cube, and they were quite popular for a time. They were known as, I believe, Bayakusan, I believe, as the square version of the Kamifusen. If you were to bat around a Bayakusan, you can see the sides actually bow outward. So instead of the sheets of paper returning to its pure uh, flat state, instead it's creating a inflated cube, which means that it's not just the paper wanting her to return, it is inflating itself more than the paper would naturally want to be. So the secret lies in this hole and in the material that this balloon is made from. So this hole is small. It, it limits the amount of air that can go out or come in at any one specific time. If I were to strike this, I have created 
a high pressure zone inside this balloon that is forcing air out, but it doesn't last very long. And there is a limited amount of air that can leave through this hole. So when I hit it, yes, some air leaves, but not very much. After I hit it is where something cool happens. When I hit it, it creates propagation waves throughout this balloon that cause the fabric itself to expand and contract and move back to its original shape ever so slightly. So when I hit it, like so, what's happening is every time I hit it, there is a small amount of air that gets forced very quickly through this hole. But the shock waves of my impact travel throughout the skin of this balloon and cause it to want to return to its shape very slowly. So when I hit it, there's the sharp exhaling of the balloon, but then a long, slow, drawn in breath that actually brings in more air than was expelled. Now that's why I can, if I were to tap it on the table like that, and I have more of a prolonged pressure, you can see it expanding a little bit, but there's not enough coming back in to counteract the air coming out. Let's inflate it really quick. The harder I hit this, the faster it inflates. I'll try and keep it in camera. This is actually, I can see why this was a toy. It's fun to play with. The Japanese paper balloon is more than meets the eye. The harder you hit it, the more it inflates and the slower you hit it or a lighter, softer pressure will cause it to deflate. This is such a cool science toy. And if you want to buy one yourself, I'll include the link down below where I picked this one up. See you next time. I have new stuff coming out every Wednesday morning. Bye.